What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. Today we're gonna be talking about an insane add-on that you can get for Blender, which will make your life so much easier. Materials for 3D objects are considered one of the best ways to bring your scenes to life, whether that's creating animations, models, or photorealistic renders. Key components of materials are how they're set up, how fast they render, and most importantly, how they interact with light to communicate a sense of depth and realism. The process of using nodes to create materials does allow for a lot of customization, but at the same same time is pretty tedious and arduous to set up for the first time. Well, my troubles are no more thanks to this amazing add-on called Procedural Materials Library by Sanctus. This is a library of photorealistic materials that are lightweight, easy to use, and the best part is that they're fully customizable with brilliant labeling that makes me worry less about tinkering with the complicated node tree and instead more about creating a desired look for a scene. I can easily turn a scene that looks like this into something like this, and the best part is that it's all done with a few clicks and does not take a huge amount of time at all. Anyways, I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. Now, quick disclaimer, the add-on I'm gonna show you is a paid add-on for the full set of materials and features. However, there is a free light version that you can check out, which comes with, I think, about 28 or so materials. Either way, both of those links are gonna be down in that description box so you guys can check it out on your own. Okay, let's hop right into this add-on. So the first thing that you're gonna see here is a label that says buildings, experimental, and so on. And these are the categories for materials, which is pretty brilliant way of organizing this, but we don't just stop there. Instead, we also have an icon of what this material is gonna look like. And if you click on it, it'll pop out all of the different materials in that category. One really cool feature that I love about this add-on is that there's also this little red line in the bottom right-hand corner of this material, followed by a C, which indicates that this works for cycles and the red line actually shows that this may be a bit more intensive on our system. The yellow lines will be a little less so and the green ones are gonna be ones that run super fast. Another thing that you may notice is that some of these have the letter E in the right-hand corner and that's because these are EV materials. So they're not gonna really work as well in cycles. Some of these materials don't have a letter icon at all, and that's because these both work pretty well for cycles and EV. So if you're using an EV render, I recommend that you guys check out these materials here with the green labeling and no letter on it at all. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is actually delete this default cube, and let's add in a plane so we can show you what this add-on is capable of. I'm gonna scale this up by a factor of two, and then let's also just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're working with here. So one of my favorite materials materials to mess with is actually in this first category and this is the buildings category. So if I click on this aging tiles material and I click apply material and show my render preview, you're going to see that that material has been brilliantly applied and without any customization at all, there's a lot of interesting lighting effects that are going on to where certain parts of this look more rough and opaque while other areas of this look shiny. Let's go over to the modifiers really quickly and add some more subdivisions to this. I'm going to set this to simple so it doesn't actually warp our shape and instead let's up these values to a factor of six. A little bit of change is happening to the edges here. I'm gonna go then back over to my materials area and we have these options here that will affect the height of our tiles. So if I increase the height of this, it's displacing the tiles based on the material setting. If I increase this as well, you can see we have something that looks pretty cool. Now to give this a little bit better lighting so we could preview how this material works in a more realistic environment, I'm gonna quickly use an HDRI from Polyhaven which I can just drop in here, bam. Now we do have some sharp edges going on and that's mostly because this is not really that well subdivided. I'm gonna go ahead and then apply the subdivision and then let's go ahead and also subdivide this even more. That way we get extra details that we can manipulate. Let's see if we crank this up three more times and all of a sudden you can see how awesome this material is with all of these cracks and dirt and different looking shine effects on this. This is just really awesome. One of the interesting things about this material is that it affects the displacement and if I don't want to affect the displacement of this, I can switch this to just bump only. And then we get a bit of that faux depth in there just based off of a bump map. I actually like the way that the displacement looks. So once I turn that on, you can see how the tiles really get that extra depth and dimension there. If we want to go even more extra, we can turn on both the displacement and the bump map. Now again, all of this is completely procedural. So if I want to change something like the dirt to look a little bit brighter, I can also do that. So it looks maybe a little bit more sandy as well as changing any of the different stains 
veins. Now it looks like an alien has uh, been on these tiles. That that will probably get me demonetized. Let me rephrase that. Now, this is just one material with some awesome customization, but I wanna show you another one that actually has some really unique features to it. I'm gonna apply a brand new material to this, and this one is actually one of the ones that's more streamlined for rendering, so it's not gonna be so difficult on the system. This is called the SF2 panel, and if I go ahead and click Apply Material, instantly you can see that this is a material that is flat here, but it has these interesting components to it to where it has these fans, and the beautiful thing about these fans is that if I hit play on my timeline you can see that these fans are animated even more crazy is that we have options over here on the right hand corner to adjust the fan speed so we can really come up with some awesome looking effects so another material I want to show you guys is the asphalt material because I'm pretty sure plenty of us are having to make some sort of car renders or something that looks like it's taking place in a city we have an asphalt with a road texture that just comes super easy once I just hit apply you're gonna notice that there are these extra details to this that really bring this material to life. One thing I absolutely love is this inclusion of this puddle, which if I zoom in close enough, you can see different puddles. And again, these are also animatable. We can have a super wet road with a bunch of rain on it, or we can turn this all the way down and just have a bare bones road with just some nice cracks and dirt on it. For this one, I wanna show you how customizable some of these are. I'm gonna go over to their fabric materials, and then I'm gonna pull up this wool one. You can see that we have this really detailed wool material with alpha transparencies in between each of the threads. We actually have an image that is on top of this. And if I wanted to change this image, all I'd have to do is change this fave.jpg to something else like, let's say the black mixture logo. And once I click open image, you're gonna instantly see that we have the logo getting applied and it looks like it's been woven in like a rug. So we're not getting any ugly hard edges and instead it really looks like the threads themselves are making up this image. And on top of that, all of these still work with modifiers so if I wanted to do something like add in a wave to this we can displace this material and it looks super three-dimensional and really nice as well all right let's keep going one of my absolute favorites under the stylized tab this is a beach material so as you can see we have different sand grains we have different rocks seashells starfish now what's really cool is that we can affect the ground distortion make it look like the sand has been shifted about even more so we can even adjust the stones amount so it looks like there's either more or less stones in the trenches. And then one of my favorite aspects of this material is this underwater switch. So if I crank this value up, you can see it looks like we're looking at the underwater floor here where we can adjust the amount of caustics. And what's really cool is we have this tab that'll let us animate the caustics, which will really help sell this effect and make this material come to life. I think you've gotten a pretty good sense as to how this material works on planes. Pretty self-explanatory as to how to get this to work. So let's show a different example now by applying this to a three-dimensional object so one that's not entirely flat for this I'm gonna go over and add in a brand new sphere and here we have it on this first material that we created now our awesome material that I love messing with is their metals material because let's face it metals are everywhere so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this metal and right now it looks pretty harsh because their edges are set to shade flat but let's go ahead and shade this smooth and instantly we have this gold looking metal ball <laughs> now if I copy over over this metal ball over along the x-axis and let's change it to a different set so instead of a bronze let's make it a silver polish I can just hit apply as well and then for this last one let's set this to a steel rough so you can really see the difference between the polished one and the rough one and already I think you can tell that there is so much depth and detail in each of these or even the polished material has a bit of flavor to it it does not look like as if you just use the BSDF but for comparison let's go ahead and see what that one would look like. I'm going to remove this material and let's create a brand new material, the principled BSDF. And if I increase the metallic on this while lowering down the roughness, you can see the slight difference between these two to where this one looks way more realistic. And this one kind of gives off that look as if more flat and less detailed. It still looks pretty cool, but I definitely got to hand it to the Sanctus Library material here for the steel polish. Another really cool material that I like messing with is the chain mail, which comes with alpha transparencies inside of this. And you can see the way that these links are interlinking with each other. So as you can see, messing with materials is finally fun thanks to Sync This Library. And for one last example, I'm going to copy over the sphere. One of my favorites is making this chocolate ball because here we have little nuts and details and the way the light affects this is super realistic. And we again have a bunch of different customizations in this. On a grosser level, if you guys really want to make something interesting, you can also play 
play around with their hamburger or meatball material, which really has all of these ridges and depth in the subsurface lighting that looks like this was made out of some sort of spaghetti and meatball hamburger meat there. All right, I gotta give a huge props to Sanctus for coming out with this add-on and finally making materials fun to play around with in Blender. Now, this is honestly just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to using these materials because if I were to click on any of these, go into my shading tab, you can actually see that there's still a node tree set up here. And if I press N on my keyboard, there's a whole bunch of awesome custom shaders and tools that we can use to actually modify the way that this looks. If I was to go into all of the different settings and node trees that comes with this add-on, it would honestly take way more over an hour just to get into it. Now, this library has been continuously getting updated, and I think it's probably one of the most comprehensive material add-ons for Blender to date. So huge props to Sanctus for keeping this add-on alive, and I'm super excited to see where you're going to take it in the future. If you guys enjoyed this add-on and want to see some more awesome techniques in Blender, I highly recommend you check out this video. This one just has so much packed into it that I guarantee once you watch it through, you're going to leave feeling inspired to create even more. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to catch you all in the next one. Peace.